Yummy, Chef. Ooh, goodness, that aroma is fantastic. Ooh, that doesn't look great. Everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. I'm joining you today from the Hyde Park area of Tampa, Florida, and I'm in the gorgeous Epicurean Hotel. This property is so fabulous and we're partnered today with our family at Sub-Zero Wolf & Cove and we're going to do the show today from their theater area here in the hotel. You know, this is quite a destination and I'm so excited to introduce you to Chef Alex Diaz. He's part of the Sub-Zero Wolf & Co. family out of Miami, and he's got some fabulous recipes that we're going to be doing together today. And in Vera's Corner, we're going to talk about preserving fruits and vegetables, which are all things that we're going to be using in these recipes today. So we've got quite a lot to do. Let's head into the theater area and meet Chef Alex. All right, so I am in this beautiful Epicurean theater where we've got all of the Sub-Zero and Wolf and Cove appliances. And I'd love to introduce everybody to Chef Alex Diaz. Welcome. Thank you. Thank and, you for having me. You know, I've enjoyed so much working with the chefs at Sub-Zero, Wolf and & Cove, and, and certainly you have been so busy. The aromas in here are fantastic. <laughs> Thank but you. But Chef Diaz brings a little bit of Florida flair to what we're going to be preparing today. That is correct. And so tell us about this first dish we're going to be making together. So the first dish is, is basically my take on a Miami flair for uh, guava uh, with crispy bacon and gouda cheese sandwich. Uh, I went ahead and used a little bit of butter bread and I softened some butter and spread it on it already and I cooked the bacon already in convection roast which convection roast is going to give you 90% of the use of convection and 10% of the broiler. Gosh and it's, it's just so crispy and nice. I know right? And and to do it without a whole lot of mess exactly. also is so wonderful. Simplicity can go very far away. So. Okay then right here tell me a little bit about this. So um, you can definitely use uh, guava jam. In this case, I'm utilizing uh, guava paste. The reason why it's behind the texture. So by the time we're going to take to uh, mm -hmm. basically just toast the bread, it's going to give us enough time for it not to create a big mess or to go off from the sandwich itself, but just maintain it there. Oh, perfect. that flavor is so nice. nice we were right? talking earlier about sometimes Southerners, you know, we're going to throw figs into everything, but oh, this yeah. is wonderful. You can pick it up in the international part of the grocery store exactly. or sometimes near the jellies and jams. Exactly, correct. Okay. And like just mentioned uh, the figs. The figs is definitely a good addition to it. I, I love figs a lot, so that would be a good transition if you wanted to switch for another fruit as well. Well, this might be my new favorite sandwich. So let's get started, <laughs> okay. Right. So the first thing we're gonna do is heat up the pan a little bit to a medium low temperature. And we're gonna start off by adding the components that are gonna melt off to the side, basically in the bread. Okay. So we're gonna start by adding first the guava paste into it. And if you notice, I did slice it very thin. Mm -hmm. That way, again, if it's too thick, it won't actually do the proper melting. Okay, now y'all need to venture out and do some of these things, ingredients that we've never used before. I know, right? That, that's one this of the reasons. This is going to be so tasty. One of the reasons why I love the kitchen is that there's no limit in ingredients, basically. There's always right. something different. So, and incorporating that to your Sub Zero Wolf appliance is even better. So, I'm adding just three slices per side. Okay. And this bread is nice and thick and oh, plenty of butter. Definitely, of course. You can't go wrong with butter or bacon. <laughs> so, <laughs> And then uh, now we're going to add the bacon and we're going to actually cut it a little bit. Okay. And put just basically three slices in mm. each one of them. Nice thick bacon. It just crisps up so well. It's going to be really good. Oh. And now to the best part. It's adding the cheese to it. So I'm going to move actually the two tops. Okay up here and this is pre-grated gouda you can, they have different uh, intensities when you use gouda so you have uh, one of the ones that i like to use is when is uh, they call it the og crystal it has actually crystallized uh, like uh, particles inside so when you bite to it there's an extra uh, texture of crunch okay. into it so 
This again, like I said, I just pre-grated it. I like to do it on a, on a microplane. That way it gives me again. Okay, see, he he likes to hand grate too. Oh, yes. I always talk about that. There's just something about it when you've done it right before you're getting ready keeps to use more it. more the, the freshness, the intensity of the flavors overall. So right. they're not actually, you know, when you buy them already grated, then, you know, you lose the essence of it. And that's the purpose of cooking. You want to make sure that you're using your ingredients at the best. And I mean, grating, it's extremely simple. I mean, you, I'm sure when you do a uh, your cesting, you have a cester laying around all over the place, or you have a microplane, or in my case, I have a dozen microplanes, because that's actually one of my favorite tools <laughs> to use in the kitchen. So. Okay, well, we're going to have to go into a break, so we're going to keep working on this, right. get it in the pan, and then uh, while that's cooking, kind of tease what we're going to do when we come back from the break. What's the next dish? So the next dish we're going to be doing is a caprese garden salad. We have heirloom tomatoes, zebra heirloom tomatoes, buffalo mozzarella, fresh mozzarella, silagini, some uh, orange says we're going to be doing great olive oils. I feel like I need a violin to have music going in this description. It's <laughs> wonderful. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Welcome back, everybody. And if you're just joining us, I'm in Tampa, Florida at the Epicurean Hotel. We're in the theater area with Chef Alex Diaz out of Miami, the showroom down there with Sub-Zero, Wolf & Cove. And we are having an awesome time. Oh, yes, we we got that sandwich finished during the break. Tell us a little bit about the brown butter and some of the things you did there. So after we browned the butter um, uh, and I flipped that, that first initial part of it, I add a little small piece of butter at the end and then I grab uh, fresh thyme. <sighs> I smell. I know, right? It smelled incredible. We're, we're, we're really ready to actually attack it basically. So <laughs> um, I hit it a little bit with the back of the knife to start releasing those uh, natural oils of the, mm -hmm. of the thyme. And then I added uh, to the piece of butter and starts crackling. That's when actually the oils are being released into the butter itself and it transfers right. that light citrus herby flavor, that freshness to the bread itself. Well, we're gonna see that presented at, in a few minutes at the end, oh, yeah. but I know I'm in Florida now, yeah. Chef. <laughs> so this is beautiful. Tell us what we're getting ready to prepare. Thank you. So the next dish we're gonna be doing, it's a garden uh, caprese salad. And I call it a garden basically because it's just gonna be fully spread on the plate and uh, with heirloom tomatoes, zebra oh, heirloom tomatoes, gorgeous. some fresh mozzarella, uh, some burrata, silagini, fresh orange, fresh citrus, and we're going to pair that off uh, with uh, some fresh branzino and some langostinos. Okay, so this branzino yes. is my interpretation of what I catch in Beaufort, South Carolina, which is red drum. Exactly. So it's like the same thing, they're like cousins. Cousins, just a little bit smaller, like a <laughs> mini version of the red drum. Oh, so, I yes. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, we have the langostinos, uh, uh, sorry, the, the prawns from the Keys. And we're going to be seasoning actually with some Tony Chasher's. Uh, seasoning. Oh, and well, that's the best with seafood, absolutely. Oh, and it's going to pair greatly with the sweetness of the tomatoes and the freshness in the burrata, plus the basil, plus the pesto. Oh. I already tried the dish I'm and so I love it. So. <laughs> All right, well, let's go. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is add a little bit of olive oil into it. So we're just going to spread a little bit. You know, bit like and this that. fish is just, it's not a fishy fish flavor. It's not very enough. mild. It holds together well. Very, very light flavor, very fast to cook as well. So it's incredible. At the same time, the prawns actually are gonna be done. We're gonna have the brancino done as well because of the thickness ah. of it. So we're gonna add a little bit of the seasoning on top. And he, he looks so chefy when he's doing that. That way, you know, we both said you can get really heavy handed if you just shake it out of the can. Oh, but that's just perfect. Very evenly distributed. Exactly. So there we go. Now that these tomatoes, that you're gonna do next are just, I mean, look at the colors. I could do a pair of earrings <laughs> like that would be amazing. You, you, nobody's gonna wear something <laughs> as fresh as that. <laughs> no, that's right. Okay, so we're gonna move this over. All right. I put my apron on so I could act like I knew what I was doing here. <laughs> so I like to cut the tomatoes randomly and then just place them in and season them lightly so it actually starts releasing all the juices and flavors from it. So we're gonna add some of the yellow tomatoes here. And even these little ones, and these are from the Miami area, Correct. you said, and there's just fresh and then they package them and I just love that. It doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna take the stems off. Okay. Now we're gonna go to a little of 
the red one here. Oh, the red one is so pretty. I love using a lot of colors in food. You know, they say you, you, the first thing that makes you hungry, of course, is the visual. Uh, you know, and it's just one of the things I know for me growing up and eating tomatoes is just you can almost tell if it's going to be good the minute you slice it, that you see that firmness and there's no mealiness. I love it. All right. So good thing about this salad as well that I call it a garden is that you can actually just cut it however you want. There's no specific shape or form. You just mm -hmm. go basically on, uh, basically just however the Look knife takes that. you. <laughs> that is gorgeous. Mm. And I think that'll be great. And now we're gonna go to the little tomatoes now. Okay. And these are even nicer, you have like perfect yellows with that neon color on them. You have a little bit of the baby camparis that I like to, like I said, you can see it's almost like pearls, almost. It's beautiful. You know, and some of these ideas, and we'll talk a little bit about preserving some of this in Vera's Corner today, is just to give you interpretations of what to do differently with some ingredients that you use all the time. Um, you know, heirloom tomatoes that could be made into a beautiful salad like this. And so we've, we've got to move again into a quick break, but we'll keep working on this. And when we come back, what's the next dish we're going to prepare? The next dish, we're leaving the sweet to the end, so we're doing a slow roasted pear, boss pear, and then I'm going to use stracciatella cheese. Mix in with honey, vanilla, and brown sugar. Oh my goodness, well <laughs> you got to come back. So let's keep working. I'll put my hands together and get this done. Vera's Corner is sponsored by Tax Slayer. It's your refund, go get it. You know, it's always fun to use your favorite fruits and vegetables when they're in season. But let me give you some tips today on how to preserve so you'll have them to use later. The first step to freezing fruits and vegetables is to buy them when they're ripe and fresh. If your town has a local farmer's market, try checking out the selection there first. To freeze individual berries or cut fruit, wash and dry the fruit well. Then place on a lined baking sheet with the pieces not touching. Freeze the pan, then transfer pieces to your storage vessel. For fruits that brown easily, like peaches and apples, dip them in a solution of water and lemon juice before drying to keep them looking good after freezing. To freeze vegetables, the best method is to blanch and shock before freezing. To do this, prepare a large pot of boiling water and an ice bath with ice and water. Drop the vegetables into the boiling water a little at a time. Make sure the pot stays at a consistent boil. Depending on the type of vegetable, blanching times will vary. When the vegetables are ready, remove them from the water and put them in the ice bath to shock them, stopping the cooking process and keeping colors vibrant. Dry vegetables thoroughly before packing for freezing. A little work now will pay off when these foods are out of season. Welcome back everybody and I hope you enjoyed those tips today on what to do to preserve those fruits and vegetables and certainly you've given us chef so many tips today they're right. amazing. <laughs> you know people think that I just all I do is dessert so needless to say when we get to the dessert part of the show it's my favorite. So tell us a little bit about these beautiful pears. We're going to do some slow roasted pears. The first thing we did was cut them in half and core them. Okay. After we do that process, we add a little bit of brown sugar or coconut sugar on top and glaze it with a little bit of honey. Then we put it on the convection steam oven on the gourmet setting on their pear slices and they take 14 minutes. So imagine basically a warm sorbet option, oh, basically. Gosh. So we make sure that they're fully caramelized and we're going to pair that up with uh, some stracciatella cheese. We're going to add some brown sugar, Meyer lemon zest, a little bit of extra honey and uh, some vanilla extract to it in order to make it sweet. You know, this Myers lemon is so orange, so you kind of gave me a little bit of information on that too, because it's kind of part tangerine as well. Correct. It's a little bit lower on acidity, mm -hmm. and then it has a more fragrance into it as well. I love using that when it comes to desserts. It smells so good. Thank you. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take care of the stracciatella cheese. OK. Uh, the, stra uh, the stracciatella cheese is a stage of the mozzarella. So imagine the first stage of the mozzarella by just lightly folding it until you get to that stringy texture that we're going to mm -hmm. see once we mix it together. Second stage is your traditional burrata. 
So you open up the burrata, that stuffing that you see inside of that cheese, that's basically what stracciatella is. Okay. And then the, thir the third stage is more folding into the mozzarella to get that firm piece of mozzarella that we all are commonly known for. So right. first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add a little bit of brown sugar into our cheese. And this is a very versatile cheese. It doesn't have a lot of uh, intense flavor into it because mm -hmm. it's an early stage of the mozzarella like I mentioned before. So it's really good and versatile if you want to use it for desserts. So we're going to do a little bit of brown sugar. We're going to do a little bit of vanilla extract. I love the way you're measuring that too. <laughs> <laughs> He's got that down for sure. As long as it's not your famous carrot cake, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> We'll do a little bit of that fragrance and acidity from the Meyer I, I, lemon. I, I wish the TV could smell, because this is just amazing. I can't wait for that to be created, hopefully one day. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit of it just like that. You know, and it's nice to remember fruits when you get to the dessert. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's a nice change, and especially when they're in season. Oh, even All right, so better. Local honey. Oh, of course, yes. So we have an orange blossom honey. <sighs> And I like incorporating always a little bit of air in it. Mm. This is just going to be delicious. And I'm going to reserve a little bit for the end of it as well. Okay. One little tip. Once I'm doing a, or mixing stracciatella, I like to use a fork. Because like I said, again, it's actually a little bit stringy. I thought that so was there for see. me to eat this. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's my secret. That, okay. But yes. All right. <laughs> We just mix a little bit of it to make sure, like I said, that all oh, the flavors get incorporated. So imagine if the cheese, I mean, it's traditionally a dessert, but let's say we want to actually do just a lighter dessert when it comes to that by just combining a little bit of flavors here and there. That's all basically you need. Okay. So we just probably And gonna... you've got a beautiful plate there that we're gonna do this on. Oh yeah. So see the reason of the fork, so you can lift it <sighs> and then we place it on the center. That way this is gonna be basically our bed for the pears. For the pears. All right, so we're gonna keep working on that. And when we come back, not only will we speak to the dish that we did prior to this one with the heirloom tomatoes, but we'll go over this presentation. And then we have a fantastic giveaway to give you more information on. So let's keep working. Y'all come back with us and we'll wrap this up with a big bang at the oh, end. Yes. <laughs> Sounds great. Okay, we've gotten pretty colorful today. Oh, yeah. I am so <laughs> excited about the way everything has turned out. And I know all of you have had the most wonderful time learning from Chef Alex Diaz today. And it's just been amazing. So why don't we walk back through, start with the sandwich with everything that we did today. All right, so we started by doing the sandwich and a little bit of butter and fresh thyme by searing it on a pan lightly. We added some grated Gouda cheese, uh, some crispy bacon and the guava that we spoke about. You can be substituted for figs as well, which is be a great addition to it. Absolutely. We have some pickled vegetables. So we did that under the sous vide technique and it's just basically submerged in a water bath for long periods of time at one controlled temperature. With the vinegar, we added a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of sugar, peppercorns, bay leaves, uh, and uh, pickling spice, basically. Mm. Just a little bit to it, warm it up to a decent temperature, add it to the back so it starts the curing process, and then we vacuum sealed it. We cooked it at 185 degrees for 30 minutes on the convection steam oven. Second dish, with the garden salad, after we played it and marinated everything perfectly, we cooked the branzino and the langostinos on convection roast, which we spoke about that, how 10% of the broiling Why? element and 90% of the convection. Uh, at 500 degrees, and it took us six to seven minutes, not right. even that much, right? And to last and finish dish, it was uh, the slow roasted pears on the convection steam oven as well. We did a sweet touch on the stracciatella with honey, brown sugar, mm -hmm. a little bit of Meyer lemon zest, the uh, berries granola, some fresh mint, and we grabbed that extra honey that we had left just to give it a little glaze because who doesn't love honey, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> 
Well, and, and you know, the thing about the way that this is presented, and we always think that the presentation aspect is one of the best parts of the show, is that you, you can make a sandwich look amazing. And just <laughs> just the sous vide of those vegetables and the way you positioned everything in the bag just looks amazing. Thank and you. we talked about leaving the heads on the shrimp Correct. and how that just gives it a whole nother level of presentation there. And then, of course, here with the pears, you know, pull in different plates. You know, it could be a different color on every single person's uh, place setting. It's just absolutely beautiful. And so we have a fantastic giveaway today. We're gonna allow one of our viewers to win the experience that we've had today, right. Alex, working with all this wonderful equipment and then being in the Epicurean property today. So Wolf Gourmet is going to give away two of their products. We have a griddle that's great for the sandwich and then their slow cooker, which will be amazing for sous vide, but a lot of other things that you can do with both pieces of this equipment. And then the Epicurean property is going to let some lucky winner experience overnight in this property, either in Tampa or in their brand new Atlanta location and enjoy dinner there in their um, restaurant that's on property. So what we want you to do is go to all of our social media platforms. We'll give you all the directions of what we want you to do to enter the contest. And then there's going to be a lucky winner to enjoy all of this. Awesome. So I certainly want to thank Sub-Zero yeah, Wolf thank & Co. for the opportunity to be part of this today, for allowing you to come be with me <laughs> Alex, Thank I've just you. enjoyed this opportunity. You did an amazing job. Thank you. And for all of you, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. I hope you'll come back and join us again next week.